A warm welcome to you all. Very warm welcome. And I'm sure you will uh, be, for want of a better word, blessed by coming today. And um, hopefully at five o'clock, when we've finished this presentation, you will have a good understanding of what I call the holy science. The holy science consists of astrology and astrotheology. It has been for thousands of years, but it's been persecuted. So people don't know the characters. When they read about Jesus in the Bible, we've lost the science. All the characters are the same people, the same entities. Those entities are always the most fundamental objects of the solar system. They are the characters. The characters that turn up in every myth, every legend, and every nursery rhyme, <clears throat> and every great Bible or gospel, there they are. There's Helios. That's the Egyptians called Helios Atum. We call it atom. Same word. Because it is an atom. An atom has a, an electric light core and then it has magnetic bodies called electrons floating around it. As you will see in the, in the myths of the Greeks and in the Bible, these characters always turn up. The main characters are always the sun and the moon which goes around our earth. The moon is not there. You can't see that floating around the earth, but it, remember, it's not in this picture, but it's there and it's one of the seven. They are the seven orbs in the sky that our eyes can see, the components of our atom. In Egypt, these were called the cosmocrators. This is the demiurge. When Christians talk about their God, it's, it's this God, the maker, the former of physical bodies. It's not the Ein Sof, the prime source, the prime creator, which dwells in the ether, which has no definition. In the Greek myths, that's Helios, that's Hermes, Aphrodite, Venus. Mars is Ares. That's Zeus, the god of thunder. He's the boss. And he overtook Kronos, Saturn, as the boss. He's been ruling in the age of Pisces for 2,000 years. Jupiter. The Jews know him as Jehovah. The Catholic Church calls him Peter. Jew Peter. So the church of Peter at Rome is the church of Jupiter. But don't be confused because it's also the church of Christ. And I'll show you that. That's Christ. And it's also the church of Saturn. Okay? They've done this deliberately. They say they're Christian. It's not Christian. It's a Saturnian church. Hot. He's the hottest boy <laughs> in the solar system. He's the coldest of the seven that we see. Okay, so there's this, they are considered as twin brothers, Jesus and Satan. Saturn is Satan. And its church is the Latin church, the church of Saturn. That's why they wear black. It's the Grim Reaper. And this hero, of course he's the hero, because without this sun in the solar system, we get to perish in an instant. He's our saviour. And as the Bible says, um, he is coming in the clouds. Every eye will see him. I am the light of the world. And those four scriptures that describe God in the Bible, God is love, John 4, 8. God is light. Well, I wonder whether they knew what they were talking about when they said that. God is a blazing fire in Hebrews wonder what they were talking about when they said that and how many Christians think about that. God is a blazing fire in the Bible. Jesus is specifically, that's the name of the sun, just like the moon is called Luna 
It's funny how people have not been taught to name the sun. The sun. It's got a name. In Hebrew, it's Michael or Emmanuel. In India, it's Krishna, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. In Egypt, it was Osiris, Set, Atum, Amun, Horus, Ra. I'll show you that. And I'll show you that the, the sun will, will have a different name depending on where it is around the 24-hour clock. When the sun is directly above you at 12 o'clock, it's Ra. When it's rising, it's Horus. When it's setting, it's Set. When it's below your feet at midnight, it's Osiris in the tomb, the black tomb of Saturn. So we'll, we'll get to that. How do we know that the sun is yes? Well, they tell you. You just have to look. You can Google those images. Google the image for the sun and you'll see the word yes. I-E-S. This is Greek. That is eta in Greek. It's an E. Yes. There's the Pope with the yes. And when we say yes and we nod our heads, we nod our heads because the sun rises and it sets and it's positive affirmation. Yes. It's the word for the sun. That's it. There's the yes. He's always been called yes. In fact, in, Egypt, in um, India, they call him yes Krishna. And that's when Constantine adopted this name for their new god, the Mithraic god of the sun. He said, we shall call him yes Krishna. Jesus Christ in the Latin equivalent. There's the yes on the cross. It's the sun. So they tell you this. There's the Jehovah's Witness magazine, The Watchtower. You've seen that, haven't you? Jehovah, the one who is vigorous in power. What symbol? The sun. Believe you me, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. <clears throat> Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. The moon gives us the month. So does the God give us the day. Because the day comes from the word Dio, Dios in Latin. So it's the God of day. And year, the year, comes from Yes, yes, the sun. Minute comes from the moon. Hour comes from... Just switch those two letters around. That's all you've got to do. What hour is it? In other words, where is Horace? Where is Horace right now? What hour is it? The day and the year, all of the cycles that we live in are attributed to the timekeepers. I showed you how the moon comes from month, year comes from yes, the sun. So we have established that all our cycles, these boys and girls, these are the Elohim, Venus is a girl, Mercury is a girl, Mercury is a girl, it's a hermaphrodite. The moon is a girl. He's a boy. He's a boy. He's a boy. He's a and, and he's a boy. Mars. These are the only solid bodies in the solar system. These are all gas. These are gas giants. Uranus and Neptune. Pluto. Gas. Gas. Solid. The one-eyed Woden. Zeus is always one-eyed. And he's the god of thunder. Why? Well, have a look at the, um, the Voyager images of Jupiter. And look at the surface and it's just chaos. It's electric chaos. It is an electric storm. There's billions of, of storms going on around its atmosphere all the time. They knew. They knew it was the God of Thunder. Because it is. He represents ether. He's the one that brings in the ether into our solar system. This one brings in the fire, the hydrogen. This is the fire guy. And the air is Venus. And the water is the moon. And the earth is Saturn. 
All of those planets are bringing in those four. They all harmonise with this. In fact, everything does. Your bodies do. Everything harmonises with the seven, Elohim, or the twelve, the twelve potential energies. For instance, I'm an Arian, Aries. I have, I have cardinal fire. So I resonate with the fire energy. All right, you Cancerians, water. And Carl Jung taught us that these are the intuitives, the thinkers, the emotional and the five sense people. If you're a Capricorn or a Virgo or a Taurian, you will, you will be most served by your five senses in this world. Touch things, see things, smell things. It's a pleasure to watch a Taurian eating, watching TV, sitting on his leather couch, you know. It's a pleasure. They're just so different to my people. We don't, we don't pay much attention to that, that sort of stuff. It doesn't matter. It's just the different modes, different styles. These people, my brother is a Scorpio. Uh, and the emotions, you think I'm emotional. Um, there are, it's a pleasure to watch a Piscean, mutable water, or a, um, a Scorpio, fixed water, or Cancer with the moon especially females, Cancerians, their emotions, it's just beautiful, it's exquisite. That's if their emotions are balanced. If they're unbalanced, you know, you Cancerians <laughs> and Scorpios, you know, they're a handful. And the air people, my son's Libran, it's busy eyes. Aquarians, busy eyes. Because, why? Because they're, they're, they're mind. These are the mind people, the spirit people. This is the sign of the man. You look at the air signs and you've got a scale with a man in it. You've got the two Geminis, that's two humans. And you've got Aquarius, the water bearer. All the others are animals. These are human. It's mind. They are great thinkers. Aquarian geniuses. Great thinkers, Librans, balanced, balanced minds. And your Geminis, two minds, believe me. There's two minds. There are two minds. These guys are the intuitives. Their intuition is what gets them through. And that's from Carl Jung, okay? We'll spend some more time on that later. When you learn this science, you will be doing one great favour to yourself. You will know yourself. And as the oracle of Delphi said, man, know thyself and you will know the gods of the heavens and, uh, the heavens and the gods that rule them.